Our economy has been on ecstasy for the last 110 years, and the dose has been highly increased over the last 15. You're about to learn how we are in for a major crash as the drug is about to run out and wear off. The ecstasy in this case is fiat currency. When the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, we had a national debt of less than $3 billion in a time frame of over 120 years. This is when the low dose of ecstasy started with the Federal Reserve. By 1971, when we were taken off the gold standard and switched to 100% fiat currency, we had gone up to about $400 billion in national debt. This is where the ecstasy dose was increased. To keep track, only $3 billion of debt in the first 120 plus years before the Fed, then about $400 billion in debt in the next 60 years with the Fed in charge. That's over 100 times the debt in less than half the time. And we are just getting started. Over the next 35 years or so, until the financial crisis in 2008, we created almost $10 trillion in debt. Welcome to fiat currency. That's over 3,000 times the amount of debt created in the first 120 plus years created in just 35 years. When the financial crisis of 2008 hit, the ecstasy dose was increased again and ramped up to the max dose in 2019. In the last 15 years, we have created another $23 trillion in debt. This is over 7,500 times more debt created in the first 120 plus years in just 15 years. To add all the numbers together, 3 billion in the first 120 plus years, 33 trillion in the next 110 years after the Fed was started. That's 11,000 times more debt in less than half the time. And do you notice a trend? We are getting deeper in debt quicker. Eight trillion of that debt came in the last four years alone, but the ecstasy is almost gone and the party is almost over. For much of the last 15 years, the borrowing has been mostly free with interest rates being at or close to 0%. This was great for the borrowers temporarily. Not so good for the banks, especially now that interest rates are rising to fight inflation. The lenders or the banks are broke with all of those underwater assets. Usually what happens is the banks get bailed out, but that can't happen this time. Bailouts mean added tax dollars through inflation, and since inflation is already high, this would send it through the roof. The argument that we have a strong economy? Well, the dollar has been decreasing in value at an alarming rate. 30-year fixed mortgage rates have climbed at record pace. Most people don't want to sell their house to keep their low interest rates they have, and most people can't afford to buy with the higher rates. Credit card debt is at an all-time high, being over $1 trillion. Credit card interest is also at an all-time high. So, not only are people in more debt than ever, but they are going deeper in debt and taking on higher interest with that debt, making it even harder to pay off. People are also dipping into their retirement savings at record levels. The yield curve has been inverted for over a year, one of the biggest determining factors of a recession. Since 1960, the debt ceiling has been raised 78 times. This is no different than a drug user saying, I'm going to quit after this time, I swear. The problem is, the longer you wait, the harder you fall. And this ecstasy economy has kicked the can down the road 78 times now. We are running out of road. The ecstasy supply is running out. It's almost time to deal with the consequences. Make sure you're prepared for what the Fed and our government has set us up for over the last 100 years. The ecstasy economy is almost over.